and inverse functions. Let's begin by looking at what is a relation. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs. If we take the ordered pairs 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 2, that's a relation. It's also a function because in this case all of the x's go to 1, y. 1 goes to 2, 3 goes to 4, 6 goes to 2, which is okay. If we had 1 going to 2 and 1 also going to 4, that would not be a function because the 1 has two different homes that it can go to. What we're going to look at is reversing the coordinates. What happens? if we reduce, re reverse the coordinates of all the ordered pairs. If we have 2, 1, 4, 3, and 2, 6. We still have a function, oh, sorry, we still have a relation. We still have a relation because a relation is a set of ordered pairs. In this case, we do not have a function because we have 2 going to 1 and 2 going to 6. So when you have an inverse of a relation, sometimes it's a function and sometimes it's not. Let's look at the function f of x equals x squared. If we put it into our calculator, y equals x squared and graph it, we get a parabola. Now if we look at the table, second and table, we can see our the coordinates here at negative 2 we go to 4, negative 1 we go to 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. So I'm going to move this over. Our coordinates were negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, y equals x squared. So if we switch the coordinates and we get 4, negative 2, negative 1, 1, Sorry, that's positive 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. If we're going to graph this, I'll just do a quick freehand sketch of, of this. We have 4, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, well, that 1, 1 was a little off, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and our 9, 3, and our 3, 9. So what we get is a parabola on its side. If we look at the vertical line test, this is not a function. If we look back at the original function, we know it's a function by the vertical line test. If we want to know if the inverse is a function, we can use what's called the horizontal line test. If The inverse of a relation is a function if and only if each horizontal line intersects the graph of the original original relation in at most one point. It works just like the vertical line test, except now it's a horizontal line test. Applying the horizontal line test. Draw the identity function. Apply the horizontal line test. Will the inverse be a function? Let's look at the calculator. The identity function is y equals x. We'll clear out the calculator we had, y equals x. 
graphing it, y equals x. The this is the function by the vertical line test. If we look at the horizontal line test, it will, the, the inverse will also be a function. Try this on your own. Try, try it with a squaring function, the absolute value function, and the square root function. We know that their functions are their inverses functions. If we have a function, f of x, we write the inverse like that. To find an inverse function algebraically, we first determine that it's a function. We switch the x and y's and solve for y. For example, if we have f of x equals 2x divided by x minus, we'll begin by switching the, the x's and the y's. Our original equation, y equals 2x over x minus 1, we'll switch the values of the x's and the y's, so x equals 2y over y minus 1, and now we solve for y. So we're going to multiply and bring this over, so x times y minus 1 equals 2y, and distributive property, xy minus x equals 2y. Uh, let's get all the y's together, so we'll add x and subtract 2y, xy minus 2y is equal to x. I'll move up here now. Factor out the y, x minus 2 is equal to x, and divide by x minus 2, y equals x over x minus 2. So there's our inverse. The f inverse of x equals x over x minus 2. Restrictions on this, x cannot be equal to 2 which was different from the restrictions on the original. Now try this one on your own. Find a formula for the inverse of x if f of x equals the square root of x minus 3. What is the domain of the inverse, including any restrictions inherited from f? So when you start with the original function, f cannot be, we cannot have a, a negative number on the square root. That carries over to the inverse. The inverse reflection principle. If we have points A, B, and B, B, A, they are symmetric with respect to the line Y equals X, the identity function. They are reflections of each other. We can use that to find the inverse of a function. The graph of a function f of x is shown. If we want to sketch the inverse of the function, what we want to do first is to plot the identity function. So we'll get a line in here. There's the identity function. Now to plot the inverse, across this line we would plot every point as a reflection. So that's going to come over there, that's going to come over there, and there we go, so, somewhat of a reflection. The red line is our inverse. If we want to find if two functions are inverses of each other, we look to see if f of g of x is the same as g of f of x. Let me show you what I mean by that.
If we have two functions, if f of x equals x cubed plus 2, and g of x equals the cube root of x minus 2, and we want to show that they are inverse functions, we find f of g of x and g of f, f of x. So f of g of x, so we start in the middle with g of x, which is the cube root of x minus 2. Then we take f of x, which is, there's our x, we cubed that, and we add 2. So the cube root of, the cube of the cube root of x minus 2 is x minus 2 plus 2, x minus 2 plus 2 is x. That's our f of g of x. Now we'll find g of f of x, so we'll start with our f of x, which was x cubed plus 2. We'll find g of x, so we're going to take the cube root of our x cubed plus 2, and then we subtract 2. Plus 2 minus 2 gives us the cube root of x cubed, which is x. So these two functions are inverses of each other. You have to find f of g of x and g of f of x. Try this. We want to confirm that these two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses. So find f of g of x and g of f of x. And now just for fun, remember, infinity is just zero with a twist. See you in class.